September 2023 was one of the deadliest months of the year. The climate disasters that occurred on the African continent were astonishing in their scale and the number of lives lost. On September 8, a very strong earthquake struck the Marrakesh Safi region of Morocco. According to different estimates, its magnitude ranged from 6.8 to 7.2. This is the second deadliest seismic event of 2023 after the February earthquake in Turkey and Syria. In Morocco, nearly 3,000 people lost their lives, and thousands more were injured. The earthquake caused extensive destruction. Many people lost everything in a matter of seconds. The underground shock was also felt in Portugal, Spain, Mauritania, Algeria, Western Sahara, and along the coast of the Strait of Gibraltar. Already on September 10, another North African country fell victim to the climatic Cerberus. Tropical Cyclone Danielle, which had previously brought incredible amounts of rainfall to Greece, Bulgaria, and Turkey, hit northeastern Libya. It became Africa's deadliest storm on record. By September 15, the death toll exceeded 11,000. On that fateful night, many people were swept out to sea by the huge torrent of water. Nearly 100,000 are still missing. And here the question arises, is there still hope that these people will be found? Or are the numbers intentionally downplayed to avoid causing panic? After all, climate disasters are currently affecting every continent. Let's face the facts and analyze what is happening. Floods Since we have already touched upon the topic of floods in Africa, it is worth noting that other countries on the continent were also affected. On September 16, videos of flooded houses and streets of the city of Cape Town in South Africa started circulating online. Strong coastal waves carried several cars into the ocean. Just over a week later, in the Western Cape Province, there was a subsequent and more powerful flooding event that claimed the lives of at least eight people. Strong rains also took lives in the northwest of Algeria and flooded the Accra district in Ghana. An interesting fact is that all of the above-mentioned countries are located in the coastal regions of the continent. We will come back to this fact and analyze why this is happening. And now let's take a look at other continents. In September, flooding in North America affected residents of Nevada and Arizona, South Carolina and Massachusetts, USA. Hurricane Lee brought heavy rains to New England and coastal Canada, leaving over 130,000 people without electricity. On September 23, Tropical Storm Ophelia brought rain, destructive winds, and dangerous tides to North Carolina's coast. Even before the storm made landfall, the governors of Virginia, North Carolina, and Maryland declared a state of emergency. On September 29, the state of emergency was declared in the city of New York. The sudden flooding caused chaos in the streets, with water flowing into homes and vehicles at an incredible rate. According to the National Weather Service, this September has already become the rainiest September in New York City in at least 140 years. Did you notice that almost all of the regions mentioned are also in the coastal areas of the continent? Central and South America. At least seven people died, and another nine are missing after a river in the Mexican state of Jalisco overflowed due to heavy rains. Heavy downpours also flooded the capital of Guatemala and surrounding municipalities. Destruction was recorded in some areas. The disaster took at least six lives, with more than 10 people reported missing. In early September, some regions of Panama and Paraguay were flooded. Meanwhile, in Brazil, the flooding was among the deadliest disasters in the country. In the southern states of Rio Grande do Sul and Santa Catarina, more than 40 people lost their lives, the agricultural sector suffered enormous damage. Eurasia From September 2 to 4, storm system Dana brought incessant rain to most of Spain. Casualties and missing people were reported. In terms of its destructive impact, Dana was the most severe weather event in the country this year. Last month, 
flash floods also occurred in neighboring Portugal and France, where on September 16, in some places of the Department of Herald, 500 mm of rain fell which is five times the monthly average. Heavy rains also caused a lot of trouble for the residents of Maastricht in the Netherlands. In Ireland, flooding was caused by the storm Agnes. The storm cyclone Danielle brought thundery downpours to the territory of Greece. The Thessalian plain, the breadbasket of the country, was under tons of water. Entire villages turned into lakes. Casualties and missing people were reported. In the area of the city of Vulos, more than half of the annual rainfall fell in 24 hours. Failing to recover from such an event, a few weeks later the city was again under water and mud. The local residents panicked because of the lack of electricity and drinking water. Some regions of Bulgaria, Romania, and Russia also experienced the damage from floods, while Turkey's cities were inundated by the powerful rains three times. In Kazakhstan, a flood occurred in the city of Karaganda. In Hong Kong and South China, heavy rainfall was caused by Typhoon Seola. In the city of Zhangzhou, Fujian province, the severe flooding affected many residents who found themselves without means of communication and food. Meteorologists called this typhoon the most severe in the last 70 years. In the first half of September, Typhoon Haikui caused heavy rains in Taiwan, China, and Hong Kong. As a result, the Chinese city of Shenzhen experienced the heaviest rainfall since the beginning of observations. 247 mm of precipitation fell in just three hours. The Hong Kong Local Observatory recorded 158 mm of precipitation in an hour. This figure marks a new record in the nearly 140-year history of observations. Unfortunately, the force of nature caused the loss of life. Three times in a month, water disasters hit India. Floods occurred in the states of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Haryana. Two large-scale floods occurred in Thailand. The city of Phuket and the capital Bangkok were affected. In Indonesia, prolonged downpours caused flooding in North Kalimantan province. In Vietnam, extensive flooding caused significant damage to the central provinces. On September 18, more than a month's worth of rain fell in northern Iran in just 12 hours. It was the heaviest rainfall in Jilin province in the last 100 years. The water disaster also affected Saudi Arabia. To sum it up, for the whole of September, heavy downpours, often record-breaking, caused over 40 powerful and destructive floods all over the planet. Let's return to the question, why are some countries experiencing such severe flooding? The warmer the ocean becomes, the more moisture evaporates. Now, due to the pollution, it has lost its compensatory and cooling functions. The amount of water that falls to the earth increases in direct proportion to the warming of our ocean. The cause is the destabilization of the planet's core due to poorly studied radiation from space. This new additional energy causes an increase in core temperature and affects magma flows that rush to the surface of the Earth's crust, forming faults, causing earthquakes and heating ocean waters. The heating of the ocean increases the amount of water evaporating from its surface, which then, cooling in the atmosphere, falls back on the Earth with anomalous showers and hail. Hail. In recent times, such a weather phenomenon as hail has become another serious challenge for people. The forces of nature hit the agricultural sector especially hard, instantly destroying the results of strenuous and multi-day labor. For example, on September 2, in Kikiti, Georgia, heavy hail destroyed crops. On September 4, a hailstorm in Novosibirsk, Russia, damaged many cars. During September, hail, sometimes of large size, affected European countries such as Portugal, Spain, Italy, Greece, and others. On September 17, severe hailstorms hit the Spanish province of Valencia. According to initial estimates, the loss amounted to more than 43 million euros. On September 17, hail was recorded in several departments in Uruguay, South America. The next day, hailstorms swept across the province of Rio Grande do Sul in neighboring Brazil. 
On September 23, record hailstones hit the municipality of Beige. Some hailstones exceeded 10 centimeters in diameter. The local mayor's office claims that this was the strongest hailstorm in the history of the city founded in 1811. Such a bombardment of ice blocks caused great material damage. On September 24, a thunderstorm with large hail hit parts of central Texas in the United States, also causing severe damage to people's property. Tornadoes Climate anomalies also manifested themselves in the expansion of the geographic range of tornadoes. Earlier, they were mainly rampant on the American continent, but now they show their temper in other territories as well. For example, in September, destructive whirlwinds swept across France, Germany, and Spain, for tornadoes struck the north of Italy in just two days. In China, on September 19, two rare tornadoes took the lives of 10 people within a few hours. Volcanoes Campi Flegrii is preparing for a mega-eruption. The seismic activity in the vicinity of the supervolcano is growing stronger. The earthquake that occurred on September 27 with a magnitude of 4.2 was the largest in the last 40 years and was part of a swarm that began the day before. It's not just the country's residents who are in danger, but all of Europe and the entire world. This was discussed in detail at the online conference Global Crisis. Italy. The future depends on us. Unfortunately, the predictions voiced by scientists are already coming true. In addition, in September there observed an increased activity of another Italian volcano, Stromboli, as well as volcanoes Kilauea in Hawaii, Tull in the Philippines, Shishaldan in Alaska, Via Rica in Chile, and Ibiko, the most active volcano in Russia. Southern Hemisphere Temperature Anomalies The arrival of spring in the Southern Hemisphere was marked by a huge number of temperature records. In a number of South American countries, temperatures were more in line with those usually recorded in high summer. In Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, Argentina, and Brazil, multiple records were broken in September, with temperatures soaring above 40 degrees Celsius. The heat does not give Brazilians a break and contributes to the spread of fires. The situation is similar in a number of states in Australia. Sydney Area Weather Observation Station recorded September 19 as the hottest day in the history of observations for this month. Northern Lights The second half of September was a gift for fans of the Aurora Borealis. The bright aurora was enthusiastically observed in North America, Europe and Russia. But there are two big oddities in this. If earlier the sky shone near the magnetic poles of the planet, and in the northern hemisphere it is about 67 degrees latitude. Recently natural illumination is seen closer and closer to the equator. In addition, the usual green color of the auroras is increasingly being replaced by various shades of red. The sight of the red aurora borealis is undoubtedly mesmerizing. But it's a terrible beauty in the truest sense of the word. It is a consequence of the weakening of the magnetic field our life-saving shield from harsh solar radiation and other destructive radiations from space. Red auroras, as well as the obvious increase of cataclysms on the planet, signal that a catastrophe of global scale is looming, and the survival of all humankind is at stake.